Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to Elevation 44. I'm Beverly, or B, for those of you who are new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back, family. So today I'm back with another video, and today we're going to dive into the Aquarius new moon, okay? So I've got my chart pulled up on my screen, so if you see my eyes looking all over the place, that's what I'm looking at, so that we can just talk about this energy, okay? I think it's helpful for you to have this information in advance so that you can plan out what you need to do in terms of, especially if you're going to get supplies or anything to help you with your... Um, setting your intentions or doing rituals around the moon. I have a product line called 4T4, where I've created products to support you with your rituals around the, the moons and different things that are happening energetically, right? I've made a change where these products are now not available all the time. Only certain products will be available during certain seasons. So that means that you know i've got to get this information out earlier so that if you want the products that support this kind of energy that's happening you have access to getting them once they're gone they're gone and they won't be back for a long time so if you want any aquarius uh tea if you want any pisces tea now is the time to pick them up i also have like three oils available so these products will be supportive for this new moon and going through the rest of Aquarius season into Pisces season. And once they're gone, like I said, they're gone. So you definitely want to go ahead and order it um, now. Also, I will say with the teas, even though they're all natural, so they're ingestible, I don't want you to just limit yourself to thinking that it's just tea that I drink. It's all natural herbs, right? So you can use it in a multitude of ways. So I want you to start thinking of it as multi-purpose use. Let's talk about this new moon. First of all, it's going to be happening, like I said, on February 9th. It's going to also be happening at 5.59 p.m. It's almost 6 p.m. Eastern time on that day, all right? And it's going to be sitting at 20 degrees. 20 reduces down to the number 2. because We're adding the digits together to get a single digit. And 2 in numerology is about balance. It's all about balance. Balance, 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 balance. This is what keeps coming up as a theme for us as well, is balance. Not only is it balance, it's also the number about cooperation, working with the other. You know, it's it's working with something outside of self. Um, so learning how to integrate the other into what we're doing is also one of the pieces of things that we need to keep in mind when we're setting our intentions or we're working with this new moon energy, okay? Now, there is not terribly a whole lot going on around the time of this new moon, but enough to stimulate it in certain ways. So let's go ahead and talk about what uh, Aquarius new moon, you know, really entails in terms of just generally, right? Aquarius energy is all about originality. It's about innovation. It's about being ourselves, who we truly are. It's about change, freedom, technology, next level information, collaboration in terms of community, wanting to see everybody win, right? The rulers over Aquarius's energy to understand it deeper, Saturn, which is our responsibility, and Uranus, which is our change maker. It is our disruptor, but it's our liberator. So when we have responsibility that needs liberation, that's where we have Aquarius energy represented, you know, in terms of those two rulers. So when we're looking at the intentions that we should be setting, there should be big picture, they should be progressive, and they should be moving us from this part of where we're at to the next part of where we are, right? And that comes through a lot of like downloads and insights and next level information that we have to allow ourselves permission to have access to, okay? And to have access to it is to slow down enough to receive it, okay? But this new moon in particular is going to be focusing on the adjustments that we need to make between who we are or who we've been showing up as, right? I will say who we are in quotations because it's more so of who we've been showing up as versus who we truly are <laughs> and who we need to be showing up as. And we need to be bridging that gap and we need to be setting some intentions in terms of, again, we've got this theme that keeps happening here where we're talking about this realignment 
to our true authentic selves. Mercury and Jupiter are going to be squaring each other, and square is tension, but Mercury is our communication, our thoughts, how we're processing information. Jupiter is uh, our, our, our expansion, our expansion of anything, ideas. Um, and in terms of this square, even though it's supposed to be a tension, it's not a bad one. <laughs> it's not bad. It is giving us that next level of optimism in terms of embracing what we need to be embracing and, and giving us the optimism and the courage um, to mentally embrace whatever is next. Also, that's the boost that we need. But the lack of concentration that can come in is maybe the challenge that we will feel with that square. The moon is going to be square Uranus as well. So another level of tension. Uranus is one of the rulers, like I said, over Aquarius' energy. So we talked about it. It's the liberator. It's the disruptor. <laughs> it comes in and makes these big sweeping changes. And sometimes you're like, well, what happened? And you're kind of pissed about it. And you're like, I, I didn't ask for that. But then in hindsight, you're like, oh, that actually is exactly what needed to happen to move me along. So with this, our emotions, because that's the moon, our emotions, our inner world can be feeling a bit unsettled because there's some type of disruption happening. You can feel like your security is being pulled from from you, whatever your security is that you have anchored to. Um, and a lot of times security is false that we've anchored to. Like, you know, it could be something material, it could be a person, it could be a job, it could be a situation. Sometimes we anchor to something just to have a sense of security and it's not real, really a sense, like nothing really is secure except for your inner world, right? So that's why you have to work on building that up, not looking to the external. But again, this, you know, instability <laughs> and our emotions being tested in this way can make us feel, you know, some kind of way. It really can make us feel some kind of way, but it's there to highlight that you need to release your attachment to these things that are, quote unquote, bringing you comfort. But... On the flip side, you're feeling more open to change. Um, not only that, because that Mercury and um, Jupiter square is in play, the information that's coming down, it's like innovative change. Like, oh, not only like am I actually open to embracing change, I'm like going to think of some really innovative and cool ways to do it. And that's going to play into how we're setting our intentions as well. So experimentation is definitely favored with this new moon. You experimenting with, you know, all kinds of things. The way you're going to execute things, your style, the way you're going to speak about it, the way you can think about it, like all of that, who you're going to work with, how you, you know, all of it can be experimented with. And you know, that's the, the fun part, right? Sometimes experimentation is fun because it's like, you never know what's going to stick and what's not. but you got to try different things, okay? So we're releasing the old way of doing things and the things that we've been stuck in because Aquarius energy is fixed, stubborn. Taurus energy um, is stubborn where Uranus is sitting. So we're going to have to, you know, challenge ourselves to move away from that. Another thing that's happening during this new moon is Chiron and the North Node. Okay, so I spoke about this in my February astrology report. Please check that video out because we talk about all the things that are happening high level in February. But with this Chiron and North Node getting closer and closer and closer together, all right, they're not going to be exactly conjunct at the time of this new moon, but they are getting closer together and we are starting to feel this energy come in. Chiron, our wounded healer, and North Node, our purpose and our direction coming together in the sign of Aries, which is our identity, who we are. Do you guys follow what I'm saying? Like this is so, it's so important to start showing up as yourself. And then those wounds, those deeper triggers, those things that you've had to suffer and, and, and work through, right? Become your sense of liberation and power forward in terms of your contribution, how you help yourself, how you help other people, how you express yourself, how you, you, you're walking your authentic path through that, right? So your pain, your struggles become the very thing that helps you 
be free. And now the opportunities that are coming out of that. So keep your eyes peeled, your brain open for the information that's coming down in terms of the opportunities that you could be missing that you may now start to see, okay? Or you may start to now manifest or create because of, of it, right? Of the things that you've been through. So think about those things that you've struggled with. Again, I want to tell you, the whole focus is to make that adjustment of who you're showing up as to who you should be showing up as, bridging that gap and setting intentions to align to your true self, to your true path, okay? Two exercises, well, actually one exercise, but you can do it two ways to help you set your intentions for this Aquarius new moon. One would be an automatic writing exercise, okay? So for those of you who don't know what automatic writing is, it's just getting a pen, a notepad, piece of paper, anything, and just writing, like a stream of consciousness writing. You don't have to have anything in mind when you're writing. It doesn't even have to make sense. Just release all judgment when you pick up that pen and just don't even let the pen lift off the paper. Just keep writing, 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 writing. Whatever comes to you. Again, like I said, we have to be in a place where we're receptive to receiving the information that we need. So get yourself in a good space, you know, light your, I don't know, your candles, your incense, you know, your, your energy clearing herbs and stuff like that. Get you like a nice piece of selenite or whatever crystal that you like to use to clear the energy or to boost the energy around you. Meditate, do whatever you got to do. Go into nature and just get in a place of reception and write your behind off, okay? And don't stop until you feel like whatever is being channeled through you is done. Just keep going. Sometimes you don't even know what's coming through because you just, we sit there and we think about it too much and we block it. So this is a great way to let that through. Now, for those of you who are not writers, because I know everybody doesn't enjoy writing, <laughs> I want you to do this with your voice memo on your phone. So if you have an iPhone, if you have an Android, you should have a feature on your phone that has a voice memo where you can capture voice messages. And I want you to do the same thing there, but just speaking. So just get into that same space, you know, clear your mind, do whatever you got to do beforehand, sit down and just start talking. It doesn't matter what you're saying. It doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense. Just go. Let's just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk until you don't have anything else to say, until you feel like the stream is done because we're channeling. This is what we're doing. We're channeling that information that needs to come down a lot of times from our higher selves and we always block it because we get in the way. So I want you to stop that when it's done and then I want you to go back and listen to it. What the hell did you say? I guarantee you, whether you use it as a writing exercise or you use it as a, um, a voice exercise, when you go back to listen or reread what you wrote, you're gonna find nuggets of things in there that you need. Whether it be things that are standing in your way or ways to move forward, you're gonna find it. You may find both. But a visualization exercise is also going to be a very, very strong thing for you to set these intentions because if you can see it, you can make it a reality. So get into the space of visualizing exactly what you want. I will say if you are feeling a little too scattered with this energy, a little too emotionally all over the place, um, an herb that I would say to uh, help you, you know, chill out, vibe out would be lavender. And if you want to take it up a notch and stimulate yourself, I would say Peppermint would be great for you to incorporate into your rituals or your routines or whatever. I do hope that you have a beautiful new moon, um, that you are able to get some clarity, that you have fun with this process, and that you're able to set some intentions that really help push you along on your path forward, okay? So I will see you all in the next one. Have a good one. Peace.